Um, hi, everybody. So I'm Doreen van Hees, and I'm a third year PhD student at the University of Nottingham under the supervision of Sasha Mooney and Jonathan Lynch. Jonathan's also at Penn State. And I have another two supervisors in Scotland, which are Ken and Glynn at James Hutton Institute. And I would first and foremost like to thank IPPN for giving me a travel grant to come here because this is a major opportunity to already uh, present some of the research I've done. Um, so basically, the presentation is going to be in like three parts. I'll focus on some field stuff, go over some root data and some anatomy data, and I'm ma mainly going to only focus on the stuff I've been doing in the field, although I've also been working in Nottingham with the X-ray CT scanners in order to uh, quantify uh, the reaction of roots under fully, fully impeded conditions as well as uh, interactions with layers in pots. But I'm mainly going to look at how they're performing in the field. So in, like, to skip over, I'll just dive right in. Uh, there's two different field sites I've been able to use. One's at the Apache Root Bio Biology Center in Arizona, and the other one is at Pennsylvania State University. And it's important to notice that these are in very different places. They have, they have different climates, but all, more importantly, they have different soils. So there's different nutrients in there. There's different textures, structures. All of this is going to, of course, influence the anatomy that we're seeing. <laughs> So what is actually impedance? Impedance can be achieved through compaction or by growing into s stronger soils. But in order to uh, understand it, if we've been we have been increasing the bulk density, which will reduce the access to water and nutrients for those roots. It will alter and reduce your root growth, which can lead to reduced shoot growth and reduced yields. And if you see it, so look at some of the pictures in the field here, it's clear that at ARBC we have very much a reduced um, plant growth under compaction, as well at PSU. If you look closely, there's a bit of a dip in the far, far right of that picture, but I should have probably taken that picture under a different angle. So basically in the fields, um, we have a field season. Most of the work is going to be at the beginning and at the end. So we first of all need to figure out how to compact that field. Then we go on planting. There's a growing season and it's not that nothing happens there. Um, we tracked differences in how the, texture, uh, how the structure of the soil might be changing. We followed up the moisture content of those, that soil and at the end of the field, season we have a bunch of phenotyping to do and I'm very glad for my team at the Penn State University for helping me out with that because it's a ma massive effort to get all those plants out of the field. So first of all if we go to the beginning of the, fi of the field season we compact some fields so basically we run over the field with a heavy vehicle with like small tires this is a photo of the first run in Arizona, which wasn't really successful the first time because we were trying to compact on quite like hard soil already because there was not that much water in there. So in order to have it to a higher level than first intended, we irrigated it and then went back. And then we did uh, get some differences in penetrometer resistances between compacted and non-compacted fields. In uh, Pennsylvania, we opted not to compact that high because once a plant is, or a root is going to experience more than two megapascals of um, penetrometer resistance, it might get really majorly impeded. And it's not that I want a, no plant growth at all, so it's a bit of a, like, like a decision to make at the time how that looks. So if we then jump to the end of um, the field season, basically what I'm trying to show here is that we're trying to collect three sets of images. Uh, the first set you can get through coring, so either we go in by hand with some sledgehammers, but if you're really a bit of luxury, you get a coring rig. <laughs> and uh, with the coring rig, you go in, you can extract the cores. These are cores that only go 60 centimeters deep. I do know roots can go deeper than that. Um, those cores are then uh, washed in 10 centimeter increments and scanned on the wind riso system, and then you will get a picture like this. The second set of pictures is more uh, to address some architectural traits. So Jonathan called this chovelomics because 
is basically using a shovel to get those plants out. We dig them up, we wash them, the crown gets split from the rest of the plant, the rest of the plant can be dried to require biomass, and then we image a root crown, which can be analyzed with software like DIRT to get some, uh, some architectural traits out. But more importantly for my piece of research is that that crown also goes into further anatomical sampling. So basically, you can select different nodes or worlds in maze. Um, I've chosen to look at the world three and world four in those roots because that's past a seedling stage. Um, you clip those roots out. They can be stored on ethanol and later be analyzed under a laser ablation system. And then you get a picture like on the end where you can look at anatomy. So if we jump back to the roots and give you some data, Basically, what comes out of this is that impedance is going to influence your root distribution, so your roots are going to move up in your profile, and we saw that both in the Pennsylvania as well as in the RBC fields. It's more outspoken in the Arizona desert than it is at Pennsylvania. Um, but all these genotypes are going to go react differently. So if we look at the absolute coarse root lengths, we see that all these genotypes might be putting their roots down differently, and I think there's different is there's four different ways of roots to um, grow under compacted conditions, basically uh, based on how they're distributed and how deep they're going. So the two genotypes on the left are the ones that reduce their root growth under stress, and the two on the right have the same amount of root growth under stress. But if you plot uh, the different depths that these roots are going to reach, there is, although, for instance, within those low within those roots that are, within the genotypes that produce less roots, the one in the middle, MO178, is still possible to root slightly bit deeper than the other one. And for the genotypes that maintain the same amount of roots, there's either the ones that put them down like there's nothing happening, or there's ones that are going to put everything above that compacted layer. So there's four different kinds of reactions. Um, if we look at compaction in order to quant and biomass, we see that in both uh, field sites we have reduced biomass. Um, this mainly form like this mainly is due to like very small plants, so these are definitely stressed. And I'll refer back to the reduction in biomass later. So what I'm that interested in more is actually the anatomical traits. So through my PhD, I've basically been doing three types of uh, sectioning methods. We can use hand sectioning and light microscopy. It's very tedious. You'll spend lots of hours so behind a microscope. Or you can do it with a vibrating microtome and a scanning confocal microscopy. Um, there's some methods you can, where you can slice up some multiple roots at the same time. It's still too slow, so I only use that in combination with the X-ray computer tomography um, because there's less plans in that study but I've been given the opportunity to use the laser ablation tomography system at Penn State, and you get these blue pictures out of it, and it speeds up sampling about 10 times, so I can do about easily 100 routes a day. So this is the laser ablation tomography um, system. Basically, a laser is generated, it's going to pass through the cabinet, and it's going to be reflected down on top of your route. Um, the root is then moved into like this, oscillate, this oscillating laser and it cuts and images at the same time. This gives us these 2D images, but hopefully soon we can also analyze these uh, in 3D because I would be very interested to know some cellular volumes and uh, other volumes of traits. Um, so for these 2D images, I've been mainly looking at cortical traits. So this is a sum up of the traits I've been trying to analyze. Uh, we look at root cross-sectional area and then also the area of the steel and the cortex in that. And more specifically for the cortical traits, I'm looking at erinchyma, but also the really small traits like cell file number or the area of the cells in the outer, middle, or inner region. And if we put all that data into a PCA to understand how they're working together. You can see it's quite complicated. So not only are these traits all interacting with each other, there's also an effect of both the treatment as well as the treatment in the field or the field and also the genotypes. So it's very complicated to understand what's actually happening uh, in, in this study. But what we do know, and the general consensus is that is that roots taken 
under compaction, right? But if we look at the root cross-sectional area, we actually did not really see that happening, which was a bit of a surprise to us, right? Um, but you have to remember that these are also smaller plants, so there might be some scaling effect in there. And if we look at the cortical area, we do see that some of these plants are um, putting out more cortex. So there's more cortex to, find, to be found in those plants, so they're actually are, they are thickening, although those plants are smaller. And if we look at more, uh, more in detail in cell size, out of my other study, in my pod study, I saw that if you have smaller outer cortical cells, it's, it's going to grow better through a compacted layer. But if we he see here, part of that effect is lost in the field, but that could also be due, due to the structure or the texture of the soil, or if there's like other stuff happening, like uh, certain architectures of the plant, or maybe different root tip shapes. So there's lots more to explore. So in conclusion, it is possible to induce impedance through compaction as we compacted some, fo uh, we compacted some um, fields and saw some output there and like produced yields and um, reduced biomass. Uh, phenotyping for anatomical traits can be su su successfully uh, carried out. Uh, root distribution, absolute course, root length, biomass, and your rooting depth are all influenced by compaction, but the, the, the genotypes are going to um, react differently to overcome this. And there is a technology called laser ablation tomography, which speeds up my sampling significantly. And we can see that root anatomical traits going to react to levels of impedance, and it might be adaptive and reactive, and can contribute to the ability of a plant to grow under uh, impedant conditions. So what I really want to support is basically that if we are going to phenotype roots, that we also need to look at the anatomy, because there's definitely something there that needs to be further ex explored. So thank you for your attention.